Hey everybody, this is Toby, welcome back. A lot of you guys have been asking after my last couple of videos, how did I do those background projections where I took a painted image and I threw it onto a scene and I was able to move the camera through there so it looked like a really nice painterly scenery but with the benefits of a 3D scene. So I thought I'd make a small scene in order to demonstrate how to do this in a very easy manner. A uh, quick disclaimer here at the beginning, this is like not the most um, technically advanced presentation. I'm sure there's like a lot of ways that you could improve on those. It's just to like show you the ropes and uh, how to get like quick and nice looking results. So getting right into it, I made this very, very simple 3D blocking for a scene I wanted to do so the basic idea is to have a little temple back here, like a little Greek temple with a tree growing out the top, standing on a hill. And there's a couple of more hills here in the foreground and a little column that is serving as my scene foreground. I made a camera that's moving through the scene. You can see this over here. If I scrub through the timeline, you see the camera is like floating towards the temple and angling itself upward a little bit as it goes this way. Nice little animation. And now I want this scene to be a painterly background. How to do this? So the first thing you do uh, after you set the scene up and you're happy with how the camera work is looking, you select the camera and then you ask yourself the question, where's the position in this scene where the camera covers the most ground that it can, where I see the most of this image? Well, this one, it's a very simple answer, is right at the beginning here of the timeline where we see most of this scene. But we want to see even a little bit more in order to give ourselves some fodder to the left and right. What you do now is you take the camera and you press Control D to duplicate it then you move it backwards. Now it's here, you delete all the keyframes that are on the camera. So you see now this thing here is stationary. You move it way back from where it was in the beginning. Then you put a longer focal length on here, like this. And you see I ended up with a camera that's already in here. Something like this here. Focal length is almost up to 60. And if you want to see how this looks like. So at camera, set active object as camera. This is what this camera sees. And this camera is called scene projector. This we will use to project our painting onto the scene that's about to come. The reason why I chose the longer focal length is that with a camera that is like a short focal length, like this one, sometimes you can get weird distortions um, in the perspective parts, and the less you have of it, the better. So the long focal length helps us out here, wouldn't overdo it, so some nice compromise between your scene camera and the projection camera. So the next step is a fairly easy one. You just take this, make a screenshot of it, then you copy paste it into Photoshop. Here you go. And then you can start drawing along. You just saw when I opened it up there, like how I ended up with. But just to quickly demonstrate, it's really nothing to it. It's like you have a layer over it. And maybe instead of this cylinder here, you want a little Greek column with a little typical like top end, the two swirls, maybe a little border. Then maybe have a couple of bushes down here, leaves, flowers. In this first step, it's really just about roughing out what you want for the temple here. And I don't even have to obey the perspective that I set up here, right? I can like make it a little bit more lower from the angle, add a bunch of columns instead of this kind of solid shape that we have in the TV blocking. There you go, then make a tree out here. 
and so on and so forth. Like really quickly roughing out what this scene is supposed to be all about. Pointy trees here in the background. Maybe a path leading towards the temple. There you go. So when you're done with that, you will have something that looks a little bit like this here. So you have this rough sketches with a little bit more time. I spent around about like 25 minutes doing this all. Um, this column and you have a very basic background build, like taking the lasso tool, lassoing out your shapes and then filling it. And I also, for the sake of like the nicety of it, I just gave it some very basic coloring. So it look, looks nice and clean. And what I also did was I added a little bit of a sky background. This one here. So we have something that is behind all those objects. So um, important to note, like when you set up your scene, your base scene, um, what you want to do is you want to already think about the split that you're going to make uh, in it when you're painting it. So I knew that this group of hills with a column would be one layer. This house would be one layer with a tree and everything else, which means just guy, will be the third layer. And according to this, I painted it. Like, you don't have to think about it too much if you model your scene. Like, for example, with that street chase uh, thing that I did, I basically went through it after the fact and I thought, like, hmm, how can I be smart about splitting this up? So once you've done that, what you want to do is you go, you have this single object here, the column, you select this, and you select layer, duplicate layer, and you put new as a document destination. This copies your image into a new document, and you save this as a PNG, and you call it, for example, column. Already saved it, but here, like, save it. All right. So you do this with uh, each single layer, the column, the temple, and the sky. Obviously, for the sky, you don't need to do a PNG. You can just do a JPEG um, because we don't need transparency. It's the furthest object away from us. It will just be opaque. All right. So back to the software. Now I want to add some geometry that I can use to project those things on. And I prepared a little something right here that looks something like this. So, very simple planes, one for the column and one for the temple, and just one plane for the background. A very common mistake um, that I found is uh, more hurting than helping is making those objects that you want to project on too complex, like that you try to mimic the geometry of what you want to paint on uh, too too closely to your um, to your, to your painting, that takes away a bunch of freedoms when in the painting stage, and also like usually it never works as well as it should. So for this one, I chose just planes, and this is basically the same setup that I had also for the street chase scene. It was all just simple planes, and I just like rotated it a bit. For this one here, I just like pulled the bottom a little bit towards the camera in order to give this feeling when the camera flies through it, as you can see right here. I go back to the camera. I wanted this feeling that those bottom edges, they come towards us a little bit faster than the background does. Very basic indication of perspective. But again, don't overdo it. Your painting should be doing the heavy lifting if you want. So now, how to get our images onto those planes? What you want to do, first of all, is go up here into viewport shading mode, which will display all the textures. And with the plane, this one is for the column, for example, select it. You go to the right here and you go to material properties. We find this one here. You click on new. This will create a new material. I'm going to call this column test. Then you have a bunch of options here. Those are like just basic shading options in order to make it look more realistic. We don't want any of this in our case. We just want our image to be displayed as it is. So you turn everything down to zero, except for alpha down here, because we still want it to be visible, of course. And then you go to base color, 
which is just like the color that it should have, going to image textures, open, and you select column. So now you see it loads our image onto this plane, but it's on the side and it's way too dark. The, the reason why it's so dark is it tries to find lighting in the scene and light this plane up, but there's no lighting in the scene and we don't want any. Again, we, all, we want this all to be painted. So how do we make this appear as it did in Photoshop? So what you do with this plane object selected that you have, you go to shading and you see here is the material displayed as a node tree. Here is the image that we selected, and here is the shader. So you see that the color is connected to base color, which is the very basic thing that we just set up. There's also an option down here that is called emission. So what we want to do is click and drag color onto emission, and you see up there, voila, now it's bright basically tells it for each pixel to make it self-luminant um, according to its color value. So it will always display the image as it is, as it would be in Photoshop or in the Windows Viewer. And also what we want to do is select alpha here and drag it onto alpha, which will tell us use the transparency that we have in our PNG to alpha it out. It's still not visible though, because what you want to do, the material here, going back to layout and into the material properties, down here under settings, you find your blend mode, which is by default set to opaque. What you want to do is set it to alpha clip. And voila, here we go. We have the column, which is just a free, fro free floating object without any background. So now, it's still on the side though. What you want to do now is go to material properties and we want to add this camera and tell the plane, hey, use this camera to project this image onto yourself. So we go to uh, modifiers and we add the modifier called UV project. So it looks like this. And down here on the projectors, we choose projector. This is the name of the camera. And da -da -da, voila, there we go. We now go to this camera. This is roughly what we painted. It's not like pixel perfect because, again, like I squished in the camera a little bit to make it work, but it is close enough for our purposes. So we do this for this object, we do it for this object with the temple texture, and for the sky, I just chose like a regular planar UV projection since it's not really necessary to parallax, it's just there to fill the background with something. And when we're all said and done with this, the scene will look like this. There we go. And now, Set active object as camera. You see the camera floating through the scene, pointing upwards at that temple and that tree. There we go. We have our painted background in our 3D scene. And obviously not very robust, like you just have to turn it a little bit to each side to like see, oh, this doesn't work at all. But that's why you make all this planning work and um, and basically you, you paint it the way that you needed to, like with a more complex scene with the bigger camera movements, you probably don't need only one of those, but you will need several for different corners of the image. But you can always take this camera and move it somewhere over, over here and turn it and then render it from another perspective and paint your objects from whatever perspective you need to in order to make it work for your film. So it's very, easy process and really fun process, I would say. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's how you do a nice little background projection. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention before we wrap this one up, which is a tiny detail, but maybe um, gonna save you some, some troubles. So if you push the camera closer, you see that 
the image starts repeating. Thus, usually with software like this, whenever it sees the image is ending, it will just like append the image until infinity to each side. You can change this if you want by clicking the object and then shading, selecting here instead of repeat extend, which will then tell the software. Now look at the little column here. Instead of just like repeating the image over and over, it will just take the edge pixel of it, which is transparent, and expand it until infinity. So now you just have this single object. The temple is still repeating, but the column doesn't. And can save your bonds sometimes if you have like something that goes until the edge of the screen and you get weird artifacts at the edge or so. And uh, yeah, that does it. I hope you guys found this demonstration helpful and interesting and really curious to see what you can come up with with this neat little technique. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you like this one and if you want to see something else next. Really starting to enjoy those little tutorials and hope you all have a good time. Stay healthy, stay safe, and goodbye.